Hello friends, today we are going to discuss the femur. The term femur is coming from a Latin word that is os femoris, which means the thigh bone. So it is the bone of the thigh and it is the longest, strongest and heaviest bone of the human body. <coughs> the length of the adult femur is 45 cm and one important question, the, which are the other parts of the human body, the length is 45 cm, that is the spinal cord and then the vas um, deferens and also the thoracic duct the length of which at the 45 cm total one foot length of the human body and it transmit the weight of the body in superiorly it articulate with the hip bone to form the hip joint and inferiorly uh, articulates with the patella and also it articulate with the tibular uh, tibia to form the knee joint so superiorly articulate with the hip bone to form the hip joint, hip joint and inferiorly articulate with the knee joint uh, articulate with the tibia and um, patella to form the knee joint okay so as it is a long bone so it has three part this is the upper end this is the sap and this is the lower end so now we are going to discuss about the upper end so this is the upper end of the femur it has a globular head so this is the globular head okay next this is the neck this part is the neck this is about 5 centimeter in length this is the neck okay and <coughs> two important trochanter that is the greater trochanter this is the greater trochanter this whole mass is the greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter and two line we can say so one is inter this is the inter trochanteric line in its anterior surface which connect the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter so this is the inter trochanteric line this is the inter trochanteric line and in the posterior aspect this is known as the inter trochanteric crest so this also connect the uh, greater um, greater trochanter to the lesser trochanter so this is the inter trochanteric crest and one prominent tubercle this is known as the quadrate tubercle so this is the quadrate tubercle is present here okay and one important depression <coughs> here this is known as the trochanteric fossa it is also present in the um, greater trochanter in its medial aspect and another tuberosity is present in the uh, upper end this is known as the gluteal tuberosity so this is the gluteal tuberosity next is the sept so this is the intervening sept this total length is the sap the sap is we can clearly say the sap is curved anteriorly it is the most important point it is curved anteriorly and in the posterior aspect it has a ridge this is the ridge this is known as the linea aspera this ridge is the linea aspera okay so linea aspera in its upper one third portion of the femurs its two lips diverge okay so in the medial aspects it continues with the spiral line so this is the spiral line so in upper one third it continues with the spiral line so this is the medial lip continues with the spiral line and the lateral lip is continuous with the gluteal tuberosity this is the gluteal tuberosity and in the lower third of the femur the two lips also diverge to form an area this is the known as the popliteal surface of the femur and this forms also the floor of the popliteal fossa so in the medial lip also known as the medial supracondylar line here one tubercle is present this is the tubercle this is known as the adductor tubercle and in the lateral lip this continues as the lateral supracondylar line now we are going to discuss about the lower end so this is total is the lower end of the femur here most importantly is the articular surface so this is the articular surface for the patella and this whole articulation for articulation this whole articular area for the articulation with the tibia so this is the articular surface total articular surface is like the v-shaped and this is the intercondylar fossa whole mass is known as the as it is the medial side so the whole mass is known as the medial condyle and the prominent portion on the medial condyle is known as the medial epicondyle so this prominent position is known as the medial epicondyle and same in the lateral side the whole mass this is known as the lateral condyle and one prominent projection above this is known as the lateral epicondyle so now the side determination of the femur so we can determine the side of the femur from its head so its head directed upward so this is the upward medially and slightly forward so this is the slightly forward so this is the anatomical position of the femur okay so two tricks are applicable for the determination of the anatomical position of the femur first one is uh, put the index finger on the neck of the femur and hold it like this 
सो दिस इज द एनाटोमिकल पोजिशन ऑफ द फीमर एंड एनादार ट्रिक इज पुट द बोन ऑन योर पम्प एज बोथ द कॉन्डाइल्स ऑन द सेम प्लेन सो दिस इज द एनादार ट्रिक सो वी कैन डिटरमाइन द साइड ऑफ द बोन इन दिस वे ऑल्सो